Charlie, the camera's running. What? What? <laughs> oh, welcome to Curiosity. And today's episode is about the Red Uwakari. As of 2003, the Red Uwakari is not endangered, but is near threatened. I'm Dr. Heptagon, and we're here to help save the Red Uwakari. Roll Todd. I'm Dr. Heptagon. And I'm Dr. Octagon. We're from the University of Alabama, where we study monkeys. Roll, Roll Tide! Tide. This episode, we are going to be studying the monkey, the Red Uakari. I throw my hands up in the air sometimes. And the taxonomy of the Red Uakari is Animalia, Chordata, Mammalia, Primates, and Pithecidae, with their genus and species being Cacahoe Calvus. Now, as you can see, we have finally made it to our destinated location in the middle of the most isolated part of Peru via its amazing river system that has been used for thousands of thousands of millions of thousands of years by its natives. Now I will introduce you to our tribal guide, Junta. Hello. Junta. My, my name is Junta. And welcome to Eastern Peru. And right now, we will be studying one of the three subspecies of the Red Uacari, which is actually called Cacor Caldus Rubicundus. And I thank you for watching this episode of Curiosity, and I hope you enjoyed this show. Thank you. This is television, people. <laughs> this is step one of the scientific method observation. This is the red uacari eating soft fruits. This is the red uacari eating leaves. This is the red uacari eating insects, a stick bug to be exact. This is the red uacari eating flowers. This is the red uacari eating hard fruit. This is the red uacari walking through the forest. Now, we have been conducting the second step of the scientific method known as background research. Background research on the red uacari's habitat. Uacaris are usually found near the rivers. They can live in either Igapa forest, Marese forest, or terra firm forest. Igapa forests are forests that are flooded during irregular intervals. Varze forests are forests that are flooded seasonally. In terra, terra firm forests are forests that are not flooded but are still located near rivers in the forest. All three forests are located in the rainforest of South America. One reason for the red uacari's threatening is that many Igapo, Varze, and Varze forests are being turned into farms because these forests are very, have very fertile and nutrient soils that are very good for farming. Hello my friends, this is Junta here to tell you more about the three subspecies of red uacari. 
The first of the three subspecies of red uacari is called Caco calvus rubicundus. Caco calvus rubicundus is the red uacari that is actually featured in this video. This subspecies of red uacari lives in eastern Peru where we are located right now. It has orange fur and a red face. This red face is caused by a blood vessel near the face. The next subspecies of red uacari is Cahaco calvus calvus. This subspecies of red uacari is characterized by its white fur. It still has a red face though. This subspecies of red uacari lives in western Brazil, not eastern Peru. This subspecies of red uacari's population is separate and there is no known interaction between Cahaco calvus rubicundus and Cahaco calvus calvus. The last subspecies of red ukari is Cahaco calvus ukai. This subspecies is almost exactly like Cahaco calvus rubicundus in that it has orange fur and a red face, but it lives in the same area as Cahaco calvus calvus. Cahaco calvus ukai used to be characterized as the same subspecies as Cahaco calvus rubicundus, but because of population separation, this subspecies has been classified as its own subspecies. Thank you for watching Curiosity. This is Junta. Good night, my friends. Wake him up, Junta. <laughs> so, how long have you been studying the red uacari? Uh, for about uh, four hours. Four hours. Yeah, about four hours. I got 30 minutes. I got four hours. Well, usually right. Alright, maybe you're right. Maybe it was 30 minutes. So where's Dr. Octagon, your partner? Uh, he took a lunch break like uh, six hours ago. Step three, ask a question. Does the red uacari have and use canine teeth to eat? Welcome to step four of the scientific method called forming the hypothesis. The hypothesis is an educated guess about what's going to happen. Ours is that the monkey uses its specialized canine teeth to eat hard, unripe fruits that other monkeys cannot eat, even monkeys in the same area. Step 5 of the scientific method, our experiment. We have set up monkey cams, to say, in the woods to examine our Red Uigari experiment. This is the monkey cam one that we set up in the forest to watch the Red Uigari eat the soft fruits. This is Monkey Cam 2 of the Red Uacari eating hard fruit. This is step 6 of our scientific method and we're going to analyze the results of our experiment. The result from our experiment is that the Red Uacari uses its sharp canine teeth to eat soft fruit, hard fruit, insects, leaves, and flowers. We have communicated our results by publishing this video and the paper that we turned in to Dr. Higgins.